So I have the book on tape, The Disaster Artist. I started listening to it in the year 2014. That's when I started my investigation on Tommy Wiseau. Greg Sestero talks about Beach Street and Tommy Wiseau's property on Beach Street. So I decided to take a look to see if I could find any clues as to which building on Beach Street that is. And uh, it's pretty obvious when you see it, which building is Tommy's. 542 Beach Street, this isn't exactly doxing because when you zoom in, you will see that to this day, Tommy Wiseau still owns this building, which is a really prime piece of property right on the road, not too far from Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Look how close that is. Here is Fisherman's Wharf area, very huge tourist trap. Here's Pier 39. A lot of restaurants, a lot of nice uh, seafood restaurants right there. And uh, Tommy Wiseau used to live in San Francisco. He still has a place there, so I'm sure he comes back occasionally. But this is extremely valuable property. And Tommy Wiseau, to this day, owns this building right here on 542 Beach Street, and how do I know he still owns it? I'll tell you how I know. You zoom on in, and you can see something clear as day. You can see the room billboard, this the room uh, poster, an enormous poster he had made up, is still there to this day. Now, it's a little bit weathered from the sun and these huge jeans are still here to this day tommy owns it and i'll tell you how i know tommy spent a lot of money on that huge the room poster and he spent a lot of money on that huge pair of pants which looks a little soiled at this point but tommy used to sell jeans jeans our huge industry he knew this and he sold jeans at this location at his business this used to be the headquarters for uh let's see what it's called let's see if this, we can still see the side of the building if it is still visible to this day because i haven't looked at this recently the last time i looked at this was 2014 we're talking three years ago there it is it is still there this used to be the headquarters for Street Fashions USA. That is Tommy's clothing line, clothing company, Street Fashions USA. He sold jeans and jackets and socks and underwear and all kinds of clothing, but primarily jeans at this location. Currently, Tommy rents out the bottom part of this building. He owns the whole thing, but he rents the bottom part out to Spy Shop. So that's pretty cool. I've never been to Spy Shop. It is not Tommy's business. As far as I know, it is someone else's. I think they rent out this building. There's a chance they bought it at this point, but I don't think so. I think Tommy still owns the whole thing. So we're going to do a little bit of spying on Tommy ourselves right now. And I'm going to show you and tell you the story of how Tommy Wiseau became a multimillionaire before he spent his millions on the blockbuster hit The Room. People make fun of The Room, but you know what? Tommy laughs all the way to the bank. And Tommy Wiseau is not his real name. I'm not going to be disclosing his real name. I'm not going to be going through any bank documents. I'm a private investigator. I'm an independent investigator, but I do this for fun. I've never been paid a single penny to investigate someone in my life. It would be nice if someone made an offer. I believe I'm fairly good at the process, but Tommy is an amazing actor, writer, director, 
all-around personality. I'm a huge fan, and in no way, shape, or form would I dox him or anything like that. He knows people know that he owns his building, and he keeps the huge jeans here as a backup plan. Maybe he'll sell jeans in the future. As far as the broom poster, he unceasingly has never stopped advertising the room ever since its release. And as James Franco recently said in an interview, the room is still shown nationwide here and there enough to net Tommy, he, does, he estimates, James Franco estimates Tommy might make half a million dollars a year from showing the room in many theaters nationwide. I don't know if that number is accurate. That's James Franco's estimation, but I hope so, because Tommy deserves it. He spent a lot of money on the room. I've heard people throw out numbers that Tommy spent $5 million on the room, $6 million. According to my research, the room was approximately $7 million. So people claim it was six or five, I say it was seven, but I've done enough digging to show you in this video where he got his money, how he got his money, and I don't know how much he has right now, but I assume he has millions. This building alone, almost right next to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco is worth millions of dollars. This building is worth millions. I don't know how many millions, but I would estimate this building is worth, who knows? It could be worth $5 million, $7 million, $10 million. A tiny apartment across the street is going to cost a million. This is a huge business building. I would estimate it's worth at least $5 million. Maybe ten, maybe fifteen. I don't know the property. I'm not a real estate agent. But I can tell you it's worth a great deal of money. Tommy still has it. But let's go into the past and take a look at the history of Tommy Wiseau, how he got his money according to my investigation. This is going to be a light-hearted investigation. I'm John Rasmus. I thank you for watching. I used to bust hoaxes. This is youtube.com slash hoaxhunter. But now I do investigations, primarily paranormal investigations. But you know what? Tommy Wiseau is paranormal enough. He's a paranormal guy. Uh, there's nothing more paranormal than this guy. So I'm doing an investigation on him. I'm a huge fan. He's a very talented individual, an outsider artist. James Franco did a decent impression of him, but I haven't seen the movie The Disaster Artist yet, but I have been listening to the book on tape of The Disaster Artist, narrated by the author Greg Sestero, and it's a very detailed book. You get to hear what seems to be someone with a perfect memory talk about the history of the making before, during, and after, I haven't got that, I have not finished The Disaster Artist. So I'm going to hold off on finishing it. So I'm surprised, perhaps, during some scenes in the movie. Let's continue in the investigation of Tommy Wiseau. How he got his money, where he got his money, a little bit of where he came from. I'm not going to say exactly where he came from, even though he recently admitted to Jimmy Kimmel that he is originally from Europe. And let's start with his name. Tommy's name is clearly not Tommy Wiseau. There's a word in French called... Wiseau. Wiseau. And this is where Tommy got his last name, from the French word for bird. Wiseau is spelled with an O, but Tommy popped a W on there, probably because he didn't know how to spell it. Wazzle. So he spelled a French word phonetically a little bit, and he changed it and he made an amazing last name. Bird. It is French for bird. And I can verify that and show you, and everyone knows that. This is common knowledge. 
Ozo, Ozo, Ozo is French for bird. Now, why would Tommy be so obsessed with birds? Because there is a bird toy that Tommy sold back in the day, in the 80s. And, oh my gosh, I think this is it. Wow. See, I grew up in a tourist town, okay? I grew up in a tourist town. And my tourist town, Solvang, sold these on a regular basis. Sold these bird toys. I believe this is the bird toy that Tommy Wiseau sold in the 1980s. It was a very cool toy. It might not have looked exactly like this, but I believe this is it. I believe something very similar to this. It might have been wood. It might have been plastic and, and uh, paper, but I believe it's very thin plastic with plastic, and it flies very interestingly. There are automatic ones that fly automatically. There are ones that fly just like a glider, like a paper airplane. And Tommy sold tons of these birds at the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. So let's go back to Tommy's history, all right? Tommy is from Europe. According to people who have researched it beyond me, they claim Tommy is from Poland. I say based on his accent, there's a good chance Tommy is from Poland. So Tommy's from the Poland type area and he moved to France after already establishing himself buying and selling. Buying and selling perhaps jeans, perhaps jackets, perhaps underwear, but he really got into the tourism business. He went to the Eiffel Tower, the most famous tourist trap spot in Paris, France. So Tommy Wiseau is like, you know what? This is an amazing tourist spot. Look at all these tourists. These people are dollar signs. They want to buy some toy bird flying frisbees, yo-yos, so Tommy sold stuff like that. He sold yo-yos, he sold frisbees, but the flying bird is what he sold more than anything because Tommy was like the ShamWow guy. More specifically, Tommy was like Billy Mays, the spokesman for OxyClean. But Tommy was the spokesman for these, this 80s bird toy. He sold tons and tons and tons and tons of these bird toys at the Eiffel Tower. And I'm sure occasionally they said, hey, you can't legally sell here. And I'm sure he's like, all right, all right, I'll go over here. For one reason or another, he decided to take his business to San Francisco, California, in the United States of America. So let's... Go on down to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, California. Tommy made enough money to set up, and for all I know, he simultaneously had someone selling the stuff at the Eiffel Tower while he was on Fisherman's Wharf. But I forgot to mention that when he was in Paris, France, he ran into a locals. He ran into local French people that bought his bird toys. And they said, oh, Wazo, very good. You're the bird man. And they gave him the nickname Birdman. And that name continued with Tommy to the Fisherman's Wharf in the 1980s. Tommy sold so many bird toys, yo-yos and frisbees at both the Eiffel Tower and Fisherman's Wharf that a local business asked him if they could sell his trinkets in their store. And this happened time and time again to the point where Tommy is selling, importing from another country, I'm sure at a great value to him, 
and reselling his bird toy at various businesses. So he would go to various businesses, put his toys in the business, restock them, get them probably from China, get them from a cheaper source. Perhaps he got them from his homeland, but I believe it was probably China. But he was getting some discount yo-yos, frisbees, and bird toys and he was stalking them. He's an amazing businessman, all right? But he's an amazing salesman, he's a pitch man. He would be the perfect flyer of these bird toys, get people interested in them, sell them in mass quantities. He was famously the bird man. He officially changed his name to Tommy Wiseau because he liked that affiliation to the bird man, specifically when he was in Paris, France. Tommy made so much money that he invested it in property. People say that he has said that he was in real estate. And that's how he made his money. That is true. Tommy owned more than just that building I previously mentioned. And here is the famous Los Angeles billboard everyone talks about. But what people don't talk about as much is the Beach Street. 542 Beach Street. Let's uh, get on over to 542 Beach Street. You just turn around and there it is, the room poster. We're gonna go into the past. We are going to use the time travel device to look into the past and see what this building looked like a few years ago or even a few more years ago. And we will be able to see into the past here is Tommy's Beach Street building in the year 2008. And you can see on the side of the building, Street Fashions USA. And of course, the jeans are still there. Here is the building in 2009. Here is the building in 2011, 2013, and 2014 when I started the investigation. I took all of these screenshots. Very cool feature Google has to be able to see into the past. The latest photos are from 2015. He probably purchased it in the late 80s, early 90s, to be honest. Tommy bought this building. According to the disaster artist, he did have another building in San Francisco. He perhaps sold it and made the seven million from the jeans the jackets, the underwear, the bird toys, the yo-yos, the frisbees. We're talking in many stores would he sell these products, and he did not make them, he got them. But he's such a smart businessman that he's able to distribute them as his own, sell them, market them, be the pitch man for them, to the point where he, he did buy and sell property. Prime pieces of property, I believe this is probably his favorite piece of property, which is why he's never sold it. He still has it to this day. Very cool. If I owned that, I don't know, man. I'd probably turn it into a really nice apartment, and I would just have a huge apartment up there, which possibly he does have. But that's how Tommy made the $7 million he spent on the room. According to what I've heard, it is $7 million, not $6 million or $5 million. And the hugest chunk of money went toward a top-of-the-line movie camera and a top-of-the-line second movie camera so he could film the movie with two cameras. At one point, Tommy wanted to make the movie into 3D to salvage the fact that he filmed it with two cameras, but that has yet to come to fruition. But you can Google it. Uh, that was a, th a thing that he was mentioning in interviews. The Room 3D. I would love to see Tommy's room in 3D. I would love to see it, but it probably would be a million dollars of work to hire some type of 3D editor. And Tommy doesn't want to throw another million into a movie where he's probably barely started to recoup that money. I believe at this point, Tommy probably has made the seven million dollars back but he's probably barely broke even after relentlessly over the top 
spending tons of time selling and pushing and going to screenings and Q&As, but he loves it. See, he loves the fact that it's a cult classic that people throw spoons at the screen. I would love to go to one of these screenings. I would really love to go to one of them, but people throw spoons and he encourages and you can probably get them yourself, but you're supposed to bring plastic spoons when you see the <laughs> frames there's a frame with a spoon in it instead of a picture of a person here are the three frames with spoons in it and uh, I don't know why it's a mystery to this day but uh, yeah here is the front of the screen after all the spoons have been thrown I'm sure it's a nightmare for the uh, people to clean that up but you know, it's a fun thing. It's very fun. In my opinion, the room is hilarious because it's dubbed. But let's get back to the investigation. Back to how he made the seven million. He made it from buying and selling properties that he made from buying and selling toys and jeans. Bird toys and probably knockoff, maybe legitimate. I don't know. Let's say they're legitimate. Tell me why Zoe is a legend at this point. And I really look forward to watching The Disaster Artist. I think Tommy deserves more credit for what he did. I know for a fact Greg Sestero's breaking career is all thanks to Tommy. Despite the fact that he was in a couple movies here and there, The Room is his biggest hit. And I think Greg is a little bit more obsessed with the room than he leads on, that he lets on. Because when I did some searches in the Street Fashions USA, for example, but this is back in 2014, I took this screenshot, and I'm going to blur out everything that's not supposed to be seen. Guess who owned, back in 2014, Street Fashions USA? You guessed it. Greg Sestero. Now, maybe that was a... No, that's that's THE Greg Sestero. It's interesting. He put a P.O. box on there. I don't know if that's still the case. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Let's see. Who currently owns... Street Fashions USA? Let's take a... Let's take a look. Street Fashions USA is currently owned. Okay, cars. Gotta fill out the capture real quick. Let's see. Um, da -da 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 -da. Ooh, it is still to this day owned by Greg Sestero, and he doesn't use an anonymous. But he did register it with his P.O. box. So if you want to send fan mail to Greg Sestero, feel free to check out the Who Is of StreetFashionsUSA.com. Search it yourself. Do it yourself. That is hilarious. It's perhaps because Greg saw that he mentioned Street Fashions USA in the book and he didn't want someone else to grab it. So he grabbed it for Tommy, or perhaps Tommy let it expire. Either way, Street Fashions USA is a company that I guess you could say is still in, in existence through the stuff you can buy at Tommy's store on theroommovie.com. You know, this isn't the best example of Tommy's store. Let us venture to Twitter. I think it's called The Room Movie. Here it is. As far as I know, this is the official Tommy Wiseau Twitter. There was one that was called Tommy Wiseau that I noticed a few months ago got suspended. Probably because it's fake. This is the official 
And Tommy's a millionaire, all right? Tommy probably pays someone to run this. So don't expect to find any communications between Tommy. He exclusively advertises TommyWiseau.com, which is a place he sells dirt cheap, great prices. I don't know how he can afford it because I see sale items at great values. I really want this jacket. It's only $22.99. And on top of that, you know, you get a free something. Well, you got a free watch with it last month, but you always get free stuff with his stuff, with his underwear collection. All right. This is how he makes money, and trust me, as small as this website looks, with the disaster artist being mentioned, I guarantee he's in overtime sales, selling underwear and everything there is. Congrats. He is a businessman to an extreme degree, makes millions of dollars, and it's all because of selling a bird toy. You know, Tommy turned selling a bird toy into making millions of dollars, putting that millions of dollars into a movie because, as is mentioned in The Disaster Artist, Tommy met Greg during acting classes, I think in San Francisco. And he's like, you know what? No one's going to put us in a movie. We need to make our own movie. Tommy did that. He's an outsider artist. He's definitely not an insider. Anyone that makes fun of him, forget you. He grinded to an extreme degree to get where he was at, to spend the money to make a movie. And then, on top of that, he grinded so he can get his money back from what some in Hollywood probably mocked him for making. To the point where James Franco and Seth Rogen became huge fans of his movie. James Franco and Seth Rogen, to this day, are huge fans, love his movie. Seth Rogen said that uh, The Room, him and James, when they moved to Hollywood, they were obsessed with it. They loved it. And in no way, shape, or form are they mocking Tommy. They're fans. Tommy should be a host of SNL, to be honest. It shouldn't be James Franco. It should be Tommy Wiseau. Tommy is an awesome, awesome guy. Give him the credit where credit is due. You can't laugh at someone that grinds and makes millions of dollars doing what they love. Whether you think it's great or not, Tommy Wiseau will forever be known as an American actor and filmmaker. You know, it's not one of the worst movies ever made. It's one of the best movies ever made, all right? If I find any more interesting things about Tommy, I will make a video. I will continue to make more videos and do more investigations. I primarily focus on the paranormal. Until next time, this has been... John Rasmus. Be seeing you.